Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2015 Michigan Week Luncheon. My name is John Zadikian. I will be your Master of Ceremonies this afternoon. And before lunch gets served, we'd like to take a few moments now to introduce uh, the elected officials who are here with us. Mayor Dan Paletko is on his way. He will be here momentarily. Councilwoman Marge Horvath is here. Marge. <laughs> Councilwoman Lisa Hicks Clayton is here. Lisa. <laughs> we also have from the Westwood School Board, the President, Tim Emery. Tim. Sitting over here, there, and everywhere, we have Jackie Lovejoy and the staff of the Dearborn Area Chamber of Commerce. We would also like to thank our lunch sponsor this afternoon, Comcast. Thank you, Comcast. Appreciate that. And our award sponsor is DTE Energy. Thank you very much for your support. At this moment in the program, I'd like to uh, introduce Oscar Brown. Oscar will not only lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, but offer an invocation as well. Oscar. And how can I forget our retiring florist, Ken Barron is here. I'm sorry, Ken. And I even talked to him earlier. My flowers are gonna be more expensive now, I guess. I knew about the invocation, but not the pledge, but I think I can remember it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you've given to us. Today, we especially give thanks for the beauty of this day, for the beauty of our state, and for the joy of the fellowship that we are experiencing. As we gather today, we ask that you kindly remember Sergeant John Burdick, whose funeral was today. Console his family and be with them throughout this period of trouble. Let us pray also for the sick and for the lonely and for the hungry. And let us make someone's day a little happier by doing an unexpected kindness. May we always be willing to share our blessings with others. And we now ask you to bless this food to our use and us to your service. We ask this through thy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Oscar. We appreciate that very much. A couple of quick things to points of business to take care of. We will have 50 50 tickets uh, for sale. We'll have a raffle later. And also, did I mention how much I love Ken Barron? Did I get? Okay. Just wanted to make that abundantly clear before I forget. I know your car, <laughs> He knows my car, and it's a, it's a whole mess. So um, we are now going to have lunch, and then we'll start with the program very shortly. Thank you. How about a big hand for the staff here at the Stit Post and all of the great food they provided today. At this time, it is my great honor to introduce the mayor of the city of Dearborn Heights, the Honorable Dan Paletko. Mayor. <laughs> I'd also like to introduce City Councilman Ned Apigian. Ned. There's Ned. City Treasurer John Riley is here with us today. And Ken Barron is still here. So. <laughs> no, I introduced March before. Yeah. Oh, trust me. Yeah, I took care of that already. Uh, this part of the program, what we're going to do now, is something a little bit different. Uh, those of us from the four major service groups decided earlier this year to get together to nominate a community service person of the year. And uh, the idea sort of came together uh, in meetings that we've had throughout the year. And uh, all four of the groups, the Goodfellows, the Kiwanis, the Lions, and the Rotary, uh, nominated someone uh, for this particular award. And I'm asking the, the mayor to join me at this point uh, because we're going to get that part of the program going. 
the first person uh, is actually from the Goodfellows, and I will handle those duties. Uh, the person that we nominated is a lifelong Dearborn Heights resident, a Crestwood High School graduate, a member of the St. Linus Parish here in Dearborn Heights. Uh, this person attended and received degrees from various institutions, including Henry Ford Community College, Eastern Michigan University, and Wayne State University. This person has also been on the city payroll for 35 years. And he was sworn in as our Dearborn Heights Police Chief in May of 2008. Our nominee for the Community Service Person of the Year is our Police Chief, Lee Gavin. The mayor informs me that uh, the chief is on his way, so we'll, we'll get to see him when he comes in. So that'll, that'll be great. Uh, next up, I'd like to introduce uh, from the Kiwanis Club, the immediate past president and current director of our fabulous libraries, Mike McCaffrey. Mike? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Kiwanis International, founded here in Detroit. Uh, has served Michigan children and the children of the world for the past 100 years. The Dearborn Heights chapter of Kiwanis was founded November 6, 1958, and since that time has raised over $500,000 to help local causes, children's groups, athletic leagues, and veterans. This past year, Kiwanis of Dearborn Heights donated to over 20 groups and participated in a number of events in the Dearborn Heights area, including the Veterans Dinner, the Easter Egg Hunt, Park Cleanup, Boys and Girls State, Spirit Fest, and Relay for Life. Kiwanis also takes pride in satellite programs that help engage today's youth and help to encourage them to help out their communities. Here in Dearborn Heights, we have a strong and active key club at Annapolis and a K-Kids program at Riverside that lends assistance to seniors, veterans, and helps us achieve our project objectives through cooperation. Our nominee tonight goes above and beyond in helping to further her students' love of community. She has been teaching in the area for over 40 years, and during that time, she has won Teacher of the Year twice in the Crestwood School District. She has won other accolades as well, including Michigan Earth Science Teacher of the Year, Golden Apple, WDIV Outstanding Teacher of the Year, Best Friend of the Rouge, and the Chevrolet Green Educator Award, among many others. In her current role as National Honor Society Advisor for Crestwood, she has led an active group of students who weekly perform a bevy of tasks in and around Dearborn Heights. Her students help at elections, tutor kids, participate in charity events like Relay for Life and Goodfellows, work at community projects like river and park cleanups, and generally assist with projects big and small year round. This spring, I doubt there was one weekend where the National Honor Society ever completely had time off. Uh, her students, past and present, speak of her glowingly and have, and have a visible admiration for her hard work, poise, and leadership. So without further, further ado, I present the Kiwanis Club of Dearborn Heights finalists for the Community Service Person of the Year to Diana R. Johns. Now on behalf of the Dearborn Heights Lions Club, past president and current treasurer Don Rivard, who also serves as the immediate past president of the Goodfellows, and he's just an all-around great guy, Don Rivard. <laughs> Thank you, John. <clears throat> on behalf of the Dearborn Heights Lions Club, uh, I want to say our Lions Club primary mission is to take care of the blind and hearing impaired. Our club donates 
uh, is a major contributor every year to Penrickton School for the Blind, Leader Dog School, and the Michigan Eye Bank, as well as a lot of other things. We also are dedicated to helping out the community. For the last five years, including this year, we gave out three $1,000 scholarships east, each to graduating seniors from Cre Dearborn Heights residents. Also, we gave out $2,500 gift cards to the people at Christmas time that were needy. We try to take care of people that aren't eligible for Good Fellows or other programs that kind of slip through the cracks. Basically, um, to get to the scholarship program, that's where we get to our nominee because he's the one that came up with the idea of starting a scholarship. Lion, Lou, our Lion came up with the idea that, look, we got a big uh, donation from a deceased member and our Lion said, why don't we start a scholarship fund for students with this? He came up with all the criteria and the idea. He has been helping in uh, judging the contest every year, judging the scholarship and picking out the winners, which is not an easy thing. Our man was originally belonged to the Uptown Detroit Lions Club, and that was the club that started the leader dogs, although he wasn't in it back that, that far back, but still, he's been a past president there. He was in the Somerset Lions Club. Somerset Lions Club raised money for an individual in the club that had seriously ill. Unfortunately, before the money could be used, the man passed away. Lou was instrumental in using that money to start the Lions of Michigan Service Foundation, which is a statewide fund that helps individual clubs take care of people in need that the clubs themselves couldn't afford. Lou has been in our club for over close to 30 years, and you name it, he's done it. Case investigation, eyeglass collection. He's been up, served just about every position you can on the board. When something needs to be done, Lou's done it. He's been out there in the freezing weather selling white canes and candy canes. He's always active at the golf outing. That's why, um, and by the way, he told me to keep it short, so is it short enough, Lou? Anyway, on behalf of the Dearborn Heights Lions Club, I want to nominate our member, Lion Lou Wywoody. And last but certainly not least, on behalf of the Dearborn Heights Rotary Club, my boss for today, Lynn Killian. <laughs> Heights Rotary Club began in 1964 in this, and has been involved in international service that includes projects of literacy, clean water, sanitation, and eradicating polio worldwide. Locally, our club has initiated or assisted with Operation Warm Coats, school backpacks, and school supplies, job shadows, scholarship awards, a bike safety rodeo, books and bookcases, and coming soon to our community, a little free library. Check our website and our Facebook page for the updated news. We always welcome new members, too. Um, the Rotary Club of Dearborn Heights nominates Claude Curry for Community Service Person of the Year for his exceptional service to the Dearborn Heights community through Rotary. Uh, Claude is a longstanding business owner in Dearborn Heights. He's a veterinarian and owner of Vet Select Animal Hospital on West Warren Avenue. That's going to be actually the home of our first Little Free Library. Um, he's been a member of our Dearborn Heights Rotary Club for 33 years. He's a past president. He served on various committees and as a board member a number of times. Uh, the past three years, he's been our community service chairperson, heading up our annual bike safety rodeo, our warm coat and school supply donation programs. He brought a new literacy idea to our club three years ago called Project Bookcase, where we donate personalized bookcases and a bag of starter books to the third grade students at Thorn Elementary. And he has plans to expand that next year to Crestwood School. This year he's working with our club to place our first 
Little Free Library at his vet select location on Warren. Claude is generous to the Rotary Club and to the Dearborn Heights community with his time, talent, and energy, always demonstrating a positive can-do attitude and organized way to get projects accomplished. Claude? Thank you, Claude, Lynn, everybody. We appreciate it very much. I would like to introduce, uh, before we get uh, to the mayor once again, our fire chief, Dave Brogan, is here. David, just wave to the crowd. Thank you very much. And also we are joined by police chief, Lee Gavin. Lee, you were not here uh, a few moments ago when we, pardon me? I can, I can reread how wonderful he is if he'd not give me a ticket. That would be great. Um, you were nominated on behalf of the Goodfellows for the Community Service Person of the Year Award, which we just gave to Claude. And uh, the one thing, <laughs> so, so it looks like I'm getting that ticket. Um, but I, do, but I do. The one thing that I, I honestly that I failed to mention in uh, uh, in my little speech about the chief earlier was that uh, he also won our Bernadine Titus Award last year, which is our 2014 Goodfellow of the Year Award. So uh, that's one of the other accolades that uh, after his resume. So now that he's here, we'll give him his plaque. And now it is my pleasure to introduce once again the mayor of the great city of Dearborn Heights, Mayor Dan Poletko. Good afternoon. And first I want to thank our community service clubs for hosting today's Michigan Week event. Organizations that include the Dearborn Heights Goodfellows, the Dearborn Heights Kiwanis, Dearborn Heights Lions Club and the Dearborn Heights Rotary Club. It's always a pleasure to have the opportunity to meet with its members in our service organizations and members of our business community at an event like this. And you do so much for the community. We're very, very much appreciative. You know, we have a lot of great residents in the community, but we are particularly blessed with our service group members who represent the very best of us all. Together you dedicate countless hours towards performing the many initiatives that benefit our residents, our youth, businesses, and even those who just pass through Dearborn Heights for a visit. In many instances, your tireless work provides valuable lifelines to those in our community who are not quite as fortunate or perhaps are facing difficulties. So believe me when I say that you are a vital and welcome part of our community and your work is very much appreciative. Please join me in a round of applause to each of you and a small thank you from the community towards all of you.
And while I'm at it, I know that it was already mentioned, but I think the uh, Sid Post and the Helena Catering, you have the best food and the best facilities, I believe, in Dearborn Heights. So great job once again. Now, I know we recognize that when I look around the room, you're all special to me, and you do so much for the community. Uh, there's a couple individuals that I want to recognize. We have uh, Tim Emery from the um, uh, Robichard Westwood School District, so thanks for being here. And two uh, other guests. One is uh, Chris Mattis from uh, Senator Peters' office. So, Chris... Um, and we also have Adam Winnie from Congressman uh, uh, Debbie Dingle. I almost said John Dingle, but Debbie Dingle's <laughs> office. And uh, both of these individuals have been very supportive and helpful as it relates to the Eclipse Creek project. So uh, you're becoming more and more of the Dearborn Heights family, so welcome. Now, Dearborn Heights had a memorable 2014 and once again I'm delighted to report that the state of our city is looking good financially administratively and socially first I'm pleased to report that our city continues to make solid progress on its path back to financial stability after completing a very successful 2002 2013-14 budget year last June we had a surplus of about two million and it looks like for the 2014-15 budget year that will end on this June 30th, we'll have another successful year. While the final numbers are not in yet, er early indications are that we'll have a 1.2 million surplus. The budget that the City Council and I are working through right now for the fiscal year 2015-16 reflects similar optimism. It confirms that we are indeed ahead of our deficit reduction plan and actually we'll have a fund balance of $3.2 million by, the end, by this June and be out of this whole deficit reporting with the state of Michigan. So thinking back to the gloom and doom prospects we were addressing just a few years ago, this certainly is very good news for everybody in Dearborn Heights. As I've mentioned many times before, a success like this just doesn't magically happen. It takes the combined efforts of all of us, elected officials, the staff, the employees, and the residents came and helped us out on the millet. So it was all of us working together. These, are, these successes come from more than simple belt tightening. I honestly believe that since encouraging the organization threatening challenges we've experienced just a few years ago, we as an all-inclusive management team continue to operate with a renewed spirit that calls on each of us to serve as dedicated stewards of our residents' tax dollars. This takes dedication, a careful eye, and yes, a good degree of innovation. One such example is the fact that this spring, we have once again earned a refund from our risk management insurer provided provider based on the reduced number of insurance payouts that we have experienced. With this year's refund of slightly over $1 million, we have received a total of $2.1 million in refunds from our insurance company over the last three years. I know there's one company that advertised they give money back, but I don't know if anybody gets $2.1 million. So I think we're doing very good and we're gonna keep that continuing. Now this is this refund was a result of several innovative programs and procedures and he heads up management measures we have initiated over the past few years to help reduce losses and, and minimize our risk. The authority compared our liability to that of a small business and went on to comment that our track record is one of the best of all Michigan communities that they insure, and we're very proud of that. Uh, there's, a couple, there's another thing that is gonna be on the horizon. I think it's good for all the taxpayers in Dearborn Heights, but a couple years ago, we went to the public and we said, we're in financial hardship with the drop in property values. We've lost significantly our revenues, and we asked for a Headley override. And the residents responded and they voted yes. 
We are now in a situation where we will be able to reduce our tax millage by about two mills, which is very, very significant. Uh, one <laughs> the city council and I, the treasurer, uh, all discussed this last night, and uh, there is no longer a need to continue raising funds with the CSO basin. Uh, we have sufficient dollars to pay off the bonds and the interest. And also, you will see a reduction in our 345 millage. And so those two combined uh, will show up on the city portion of the tax bill at about a 15% reduction in the overall tax bill. So we're very proud that we will now be able to share in, in this good news directly with our residents. Now, it, as in past years, the governor's focus on encouraging communities to foster collaborative efforts continues to be a, one of his high priorities. And Dearborn Heights is still an active participant in the area as we continue to work smarter. I'm happy to report that the initiatives we have take, undertaken, particularly with our good friends in Dearborn, continue to reap rewards for both communities, our business, and our residents. Uh, Michael's work and the work we've done on libraries and the work that we've done, and I know he's here, uh, Doug, on the informational technology departments are just two areas that continue to show how the two communities working together can cut their costs and perform services to its public in a better and, and more successful fashion. And I will tell you that uh, Mayor O'Reilly, who I consider a very good friend, and the mayor and I uh, had lunch just a couple days ago, and we both had about 12 ideas. So I'm warning the staff, you're all gonna be getting uh, suggestions on how to uh, do some of this improvement. But we have other areas that we believe the two communities can work together and provide cheaper, better services to our residents. So as we develop those, we'll certainly introduce them both together and that's not the only community I'm talking to. I've got the Down Rivers, we're talking about uh, joint assessing. Uh, and in Western Wayne, we've got some discussions going on with some other things with our neighbor Garden City and so in Westland. So we're constantly looking at ways that we can perform better, cheaper, and those will be coming forth shortly. It's grateful to see the city hosting so many successful programs while seeking even more opportunities and particularly seeing the positive fund balance that comes as a result of all of our hard work. In the upcoming budget year, we will continue to ensure that our residents enjoy the same city services and programs that they expect while continuing to work towards keeping costs as low as possible. Another indicator that we are solidly on the road to good economic health comes from the many new businesses that we welcome to the city since we last met. Dearborn Heights, of course, is home to a relatively few large businesses. Rather, our makeup tends to lean towards residential neighborhoods with a unique blend of small to mid-sized retail outlets, private practices, service organization, a modest number of manufacturing facilities. And I recognize as a young boy, having grown up in a household that my dad had his own business, how important small business is to America and to the economy. And I can't say that enough because it really, I saw all my, dad work, my dad's hard efforts and work and his partners, but they employed a lot of employees, they paid their taxes, and they provided good products and I with that background I'm always very sensitive whenever a small business comes to my office looking for help and that's why I always tell them one of the things you should do is join the chamber because they they will do a good job so I see that the president of the chamber is here so some of the new businesses we welcome into our city as well as some renovations to existing ones included the renovation and the expansion of the Imperial Healthcare facility on Powers Avenue we had the grand opening of LLL Meats on Ford Road and the Golden Edge Pizza, which is also on Ford Road. Uh, we had a grand reopening of the Saturn Food Market on Van Bourne Road and the grand opening of the Harris, uh, Hair Salon, also on Van Bourne. 
and the opening of another new grant Greenland market also on Ford Road. And most recently, we just had another kind of grand reopening of the AAA insurance office on Ford Road, as well as welcomed uh, Agent Renan Crooms to the community. And I'm, I'm assuring that uh, Mr. Zadikin told me that I, I get a free uh, AAA, uh, uh, I don't have to pay in June. But I, <laughs> I was real excited when he told me that, and I found out they don't charge anybody in June when you get the automatic uh, renewal <laughs> off the bank. So I, but thank you, John, for, uh, for that suggestion. It made, me, made my day that day. We also celebrated the golden anniversary of one of our longtime landmark restaurants, Antonio's. And uh, we congratulate our good friends there for a half century of great food and service and everything they do in our community. As, of, as always, we are grateful to those businesses who continue to make Dearborn Heights their home and choose to solidify their positions here by reinvesting in their operations through significant upgrades to their facilities. I hope you will join me in congratulating these businesses and continue to remember their offering of products, services, and great food as you do your shopping in the future. Now, for many of us, the coming of warm weather means getting out there and doing yard work and home maintenance. This plays a huge role in helping our neighborhoods hold their property values, as well as ensuring they remain pleasant, safe places to live, work, and play. Your city is doing its part by ensuring its ordinance officers will be on the job to help identify those yards and structures that maybe need a little bit of suggestion to clean up their yards. So we'll be, we'll, they'll be there. To enhance these efforts, the city over the past year embark, embarked on the creation of a new ordinance and animal control department. And that serves as a standalone operation with its own director, Jack McIntyre. This new operation has enjoyed immediate results and based on the number of complaints we are receiving, it's a popular addition to our administrative structure. Its efficiency has shown us to combine duties and divide the entire city into individual districts with one officer being responsible for his or her own district. Uh, the one thing that I thought was fascinating is one of the first calls they received and I didn't know we had alligators in the uh, city of Dearborn Heights, but we actually had an alligator get out of somebody's backyard on Whitefield near Richardson, cross Beach Daily Road, and somewhere on near Figueroa in, or in Berwyn, it was captured uh, by our ordinance department. So um, we, we now, they have gotten uh, quite a bit of training, but we are now experts in hunting down alligators. <laughs> So, Jack keep, and your crew, keep up the good work. <laughs> now, last August, Dearborn Heights, like many communities throughout southeastern Michigan, experienced a late season storm that resulted in one of the worst flood-related incidents in history. Regionally, nearly a billion dollars in damage was reported. Some 1,500 homes and businesses throughout our city alone reported some degree of water damage. Throughout the duration of the incident, we, with the support of the Wayne County Emergency Management Division, the Michigan State Police, and FEMA, did everything we could to help soften the blow for those residents and businesses that were affected. Most gratifying through this ordeal, however, was the involvement of our residents who stepped up to help members of the Community Emergency Response Team, better known as CERT, private individuals, local merchants. It was a case of neighbors helping neighbors. And that was the only way that some of these people were able to get through this tragic event. The damage that individuals had, the sewer water not only coming up through the drains, but Ecorus Creek coming literally through their back door and their front doors and destroying their homes is a sight that none of us will ever forget as we went out and looked at those affected by it. Now speaking of disasters, I want to remind all of you we have a new cell phone based emergency alert system in place which simply requires you to download a free and confidential application on your cell phone. 
It's called Ping 4 Alerts, and you can get the free download by going into your app store and typing in the word Ping 4, then downloading the app. Many of our residents are already using it, and the program is getting great reviews, as it allows our staff to send out emergency information quickly and efficiently as events are unfolding. With storm season coming up, this is particularly a good time to include this resource on your cell phone. But even with all the financial, business, and administrative successes, we can't forget that one of the biggest reasons people like to live in Dearborn Heights is because of our great neighborhoods and our recreational activities. Throughout the summer, Dearborn Heights will continue its tradition of offering many family fun events. Our Van Houten Park splash pad, located in back of the City Hall grounds, will again bring some wet relief to children of all ages as hopefully the weather starts to warm up and we're not stuck with 50 degrees fall summer. <laughs> Final plans are underway for the city's annual Spirit Festival, which will take place June 10th through 14th, 14th with midway rides, great games, food, entertainment, and great people to share time with. Classic car buffs are already looking forward to the tele Telegraph Cruise on July 25th, and this year's Family Fun Day will take place on August 4th. Bargain hunters are already looking forward to our annual citywide garage sale on August 8th, and let's not forget the Dearborn Heights Professional Firefighters Union annual chili cook-off, which will be held on park, at Parkland Park on August 15th. And if you haven't been there, you really need to because it is a great event. Also of great importance on the recreation scene is our newly renovated ice arena. Faced with declining participation, the arena has suffered greatly over the past few years, resulting in its closure last year. But thanks to the great innovation and commitment by Jerry, the arena has been completely renovated and transformed into a roller skating and rock a roller hockey arena. The new arena has enjoyed renewed interest and participation and now plays host to professional college and youth roller hockey teams and tournaments, which consist not only of local players, but athletes who come to Dearborn Heights on a national and regional basis as well. If you haven't tried rollerblading, I encourage you to get over to the uh, Canfield uh, Arena and give it a try and uh, it'll be something new if you haven't done it before. Uh, watch the city website for more information on these and other events in the upcoming months, but it's definitely the Recreation Department puts out a good product and they have more to come, so we encourage all of you to participate as much as you can. Just a couple of years ago, our city celebrated its golden anniversary. As we looked back then, we reflected on our community's rich history. They were indeed fascinating, eventful, and gratifying, and left us with enthusiasm as we looked into the future. A couple of years later, I feel more confident than ever that Dearborn Heights is poised to, and in, in great shape, to take on the next 50 years. I, I would like to, uh, before I just wrap up, I want to recognize because uh, I've been in the city quite a long time and I had the opportunity to be a council chairman for many, many years. I, too many that I, I don't really remember. Uh, in fact, I don't, is there something to do on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock? Because I, I, my whole adult life, if, uh, and this, I'll just share this one. One time I had sold a car to somebody. It was a, a, a Mustang that I had built up and had, back in the day, 400 horsepower, which was a lot, but now they sell cars with 700. So I sold the car to an individual, and little did I know that it would be involved in a series of robberies in the cold water area. And so the person kept, the, I sold the car and the plate. I'd gone on the management program at Ford Motor Company, so I was now entitled to two lease vehicles and I really didn't need this hot rod Mustang because I get a brand new Mustang from the company. So I get a call on a Wednesday and the person identifies themselves as a state trooper out of the cold water branch. And he says, uh, do you have a black fastback Mustang and uh, with, uh, with nice racing red stripes over the hood? 
And I said, well, I used to have that car. I don't have it anymore. So the next question that you often hear at these police shows on TV, sir, what were you doing last night at 8 (laughs) o'clock? I said, uh, uh, I was at my city council meeting. I'm the council chairman. I'm at that meeting every night or every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. He said, sir, I understand now. I explained to him what happened, but he said that that car outran they're troopers. Uh, and, uh, and I told him, I said, it's got 400 horse uh, racing suspension. I said, probably tops out at about, what was that guy doing 153 and I-75? I said, it could probably out distance the 153. But that's a true story, so it just came to mind as, as I was reading. But what I wanted to point out was that Ken Barron is not going to continue on the council. He's been a council chairman for a long time. And Ken, I want to say personally, i uh, thanking you for the job that you've done in the city. And unless you've been a council chairman or a mayor, I don't think you really understand some of these jobs. Uh, You can get close, but I don't know that you fully. And you've done done a great service. And thank your wife, who I was going to say something if she was here, but for allowing her to have you spend your Tuesday evenings and for the great service you've done to the community of Dearborn Heights. So with that, I just want to thank everybody for your continued involvement and service to the residents of the city of Dearborn Heights. It's a great city. I'm very proud to be its mayor, and I'm so proud to have all of you as our residents and those of you that are not residents but contribute to the city. Thank you also. Have a good day. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate those great words. And, you know, while you were mentioning about, you know, me giving you the AAA discount, I happen to think about, what is it, the $2.1 million that we're getting back? How about, like, no property taxes for June? (laughs) Great idea, don't you think? I think we ought to get behind that. All right. Uh, Right now it's time for our 50-50 raffle. So we'll be uh, drawing the, uh, the tickets for that and as well... Uh, State Senator Dave Kinesa could not be with us today, but he did donate a flag that flew over the state capitol, and the flag will also be raffled off as well. So, uh, Donald, if we're ready. We are ready. All right. Uh, if I can just introduce this, I, uh, the, the benefit, the raffle was up. Through the gen- uh, generosity of the people here, $163. Very good. So the four service clubs benefit by the uh, $81, $82. So the prize pool is 81, and uh, the people kind of preferred three prizes, so I split it up into three three places. And the uh, first place, the lowest one, third place, is $10, and the winning number is, last, last four, it's 6134. Six, one, three, four. All right. Who else? Stand up, Michael. Okay. Uh, I didn't check that number. I'm sure it's good. I had six, one, three, five, and I know he bought his before mine. Okay, this is a twenty-dollar prize. Second prize. And the number is 6190. 6190. Jackie? 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 Six zero one zero. Mike. Mike. And now the prize for the flag. Six two 
zero three. Six two zero three. Anybody? Nick. Nick, you've got to climb the flagpole at the Capitol. Oh, oh, the flag, so. <laughs> just, just so you know. <laughs> okay, no, we'll, get it. we'll get it. Thanks, everyone, for coming. We appreciate your time. We certainly hope that you enjoyed yourself. Once again, thanks to the Stit Post, thanks to Comcast, to DTE, and to everyone for attending. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Hello everyone and welcome to Around Town. We are here with Mayor Dan Poletko and we just completed a wonderful event uh, with the Kiwanis Club, the Rotary Club, the Lions Club and the Goodfellows Club. And the mayor is going to talk to us about what he discussed in regards to the state of our city and the wonderful bright future of Dearborn Heights. So let's give it to the mayor. Well, thank you, CM. It's so good seeing you. Uh, yeah, I had the opportunity. This is the one event every year that the service clubs all come together for a lunch, and they asked me to give a sit, uh, state of the city. So I did that and told them that we're doing very well. We uh, ran a surplus the last two years, and we anticipate a surplus next year. And then probably the biggest news is I told all of them that taxes will be reduced by the council and the mayor of two mills. And so... Uh, <laughs> The, the public was there when we needed a Headley override, and this is our way of sh showing them that we appreciate it. Now that we're back in financial health, we're going to return and reduce taxes for them. Well, that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, information to have. And um, it is wonderful how the community came together when we did ask for the Headley Amendment override, and now, and now it's paying off. So uh, wonderful job in your management skills, of course, which, uh, which, which are very evident in, in our financial um, health for the city. But I see this as a team effort between the city workers, uh, all of uh, the community, and the management team, the council, the treasurer, the, all of us working together and shows but all of us working together with the public how much we can accomplish. Absolutely. You're just as good as your team that is around you. Absolutely. We have a lot of different things that are happening in Dearborn Heights too. So we have the festival and also um, new businesses. Talk to us about the new businesses that are coming in. We're sort of booming with business which is a wonderful thing for Dearborn Heights um, and a wonderful city to live in and now we have all these additional services as well. Absolutely. We we're very pleased because uh, uh, the amount of uh, grocery stores seem to be getting reduced and to have Saturn continue on Van Born is very important for that area of the community and really uh, so that's important to us and having another Greenland market uh, on Ford Road uh, the expansion it shows that these are businesses that people want to patronize and that's why they're expanding but to have two Greenland markets uh, on Ford Road um, it's great, and they're going to be where the Honey Baked Ham used to be uh, area. So we're, we're just pleased with all the new small businesses that are coming in, nail salons, pizzerias, and then at the same time our longtime standards like Antonio's uh, in the Heights Shopping Center just had their 50th celebration, and we're just honored to have a, a place that people would want to work, shop, and play. Absolutely, and the businesses are doing well. They're thriving as well. Um, we're not going to go hungry in Dearborn Heights. A lot of food. Um, the festival is coming up, so something fun, and hopefully the weather is going to improve. Yep. Well, we have the festival. That's the next thing coming up. Uh, we have a garage sale that's going to be in August, and then a citywide garage sale at Canfield Center. And then one of my uh, fun events, uh, we'll have the Telegraph Cruise again on, the, on at late July. It's always on the last Saturday. And so um, all these events and many more, um, we'll have open the splash pad if you have younger children and you really are looking for something to do and it's hot outside uh, and you can cool them down, take them to the splash pad. It's, uh, it's just a, a great event, but we have so much going on. Absolutely. Well, Dearborn Heights is definitely a happening place. So around town in Dearborn Heights, get out there, enjoy the fun. Summer is here. Dearborn Heights is thriving. Thank you, Mayor Dan Paletko, and thank you for watching. <laughs>